get there. He can help get you there. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this day. This is the day I will rejoice, especially today. For we know we serve a risen Savior. And we are so thankful for it. It separates Christianity from all other religions. The supernatural incarnation, the supernatural life of Christ, the supernatural death of Christ, the supernatural resurrection of Christ. And we are so thankful for it. Lord, let us celebrate today. Let us understand the true meaning of what today means for us. That Christ has defeated death and the grave. He destroyed it. When he came out, he destroyed the power of death and the power of the grave. And we thank you for it. Bless us today, O oh God, those that are in the house, those that are watching online, let us serve you in a greater way. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to do a special start for you, so hang on.
blood can wash away my sin.
out this morning. Hallelujah. You realize without the shedding of His blood, you and I would still be lost in sin. Hallelujah. No hope. I said no hope. No security of salvation. No mansion. Hallelujah. When I think of what he did for me. On his way to the cross. From the garden of Gethsemane. Until the last breath that he took. When he said it is finished. It is paid for. He saw every sin that you and I would ever commit in our lifetime. And he said, you know what? I'm going to pay for that. I'm going to cover that. Because I love you so much. I love you so much. And I want to spend eternity with you. Hallelujah. I don't want to lose anyone. And my blood still sets the captives free today. And my blood still redeems people's lives today. Hallelujah. And my blood still sets people free today. My blood will never lose its power. Because I am the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah, and I declare to you that soon and very soon, I am coming back. I am coming back to claim what is mine, forever to be with me in glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, Jesus. We're going to do one that's not even on the list. Imagine that. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Well, soon and very soon, we are going to see the King.
it's okay if you act a little Pentecostal this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Father, we thank you for this day. Yes. We ask, Almighty God, that you administer to us by your Holy Spirit. We invoke the names of God in the Revival Center Church. Jehovah, Father God. Jehovah Elohim El Shaddai Adonai Yahweh, the Almighty God, Creator, Sustainer, we worship you this morning. Jesus the Christ, Son of God, Son of Man, God in the flesh, born of a Virgin Mary, who lived a sinless, holy, perfect life, died on the cross, rose three days later, is ascended and now seated at the right hand of the throne like we just uttered those words. He's coming back. Holy Spirit, breath of God, Spirit of God, third person of the Holy Trinity, we worship you in the house this morning. Minister God, sweep over this congregation with your power, your presence, your glory. Those that are in need of a spiritual healing and a spiritual touch, command it to be done, Almighty God. Those that are in need of a mental touch, heal and make whole. A physical touch. Almighty God. Heal and make whole today. A financial blessing and miracle. Cause it to happen. Marriages to be restored. Families to be restored. God Almighty this morning. Move in our midst. And we give you the praise and the glory for it. In Jesus name and all of God's people said. Amen. Give the Lord one more round of applause. your home, but wherever God leads you, we pray that you would get planted and produce fruit in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen, amen. amen and amen. We, uh, we have an old saying here, we do church different. We, we do church different. We try to do church different. Sometimes even doing church different is different. So we want you to understand that we're about to receive the tithe and offering this morning. But we don't pass the plate. We don't come and grab it from you. We're not going to pick your pocket. You give us unto the Lord. You give through the church to the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 So we have tithe and offering boxes, two in the front and two in the back. And we just encourage you to give. So stand to your feet this morning as we receive this morning tithe and offering. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Say it with me, I declare and decree that my God is faithful and true. I declare and decree that my God has blessed me and still blessing me with all of his blessings. I declare and decree that God has fully funded all of my needs and all of his purposes in my life. I count it a joy and honor to bring his tithe and my offering into his store. Else, somebody give me a hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. God bless you. God bless the givers in Jesus' name. You may be seated in the house of God. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord, this morning. Blessed be the name of the Most High God. Yes. Well, I'm looking. Where did David? He was over here. There he is. Right there. You know, as growing up, my two older brothers beat the you know what out of me. They were mean, dirty, and nasty. And I enjoy being pastor because I get to tell them what to do. It's my revenge. So boys, come on up. We're doing the first verse of the old Ricky Cross. Just first one. And if you don't remember it, just say some words and we'll get through it. Amen. Daryl, get in the middle here. <laughs> Just 
stomach then, Dave. <laughs> okay. If you'd like us to come and, and sing for you. We're open. Believe me. We're open. Nobody's calling. The three zeros. Uh, just, you know. Some of you have heard this before. 
One of my biggest personal pet peeves, and I, I get it, I understand, um, you know, that, that you, you really can't do it justice, but I've always been bothered by pictures of Christ on the cross. He's got one little trickle of blood here and a, another drop of blood there, and he, he, he's got this, this sad pouty face. Like somebody just took the last cookie. I'm serious. I'm going to tell you this morning. That was not the look of Christ on the cross. He was tormented and tortured from the garden to the cross. And by the time that he had uttered these final words... It is finished. He was the most disfigured, the most grotesque, gross-looking creature that had ever been seen on planet Earth. And he was covered, literally covered and drenched in blood from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. What can wash away my sin? What can, what can heal me again? What can make me whole again? What, what can get me saved? What can get me restored? It's what? <laughs> Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So let's go and find out about this blood. Amen. Amen. So we go back to the very beginning, Genesis chapter 3, we find that Adam and Eve sinned, and they tried to cover themselves with vegetation, and in verse 21, God proclaims prophetically, God proclaims about the Messiah that is to come, he said that you do not, you cannot, you cannot wash away. You cannot cover your sins. It is I, Jehovah Elohim El Shaddai, Yahweh Adonai, the only one that's going to cover your sin. And he did the first, the first performed the first death in the in the earth on the earth when he struck and killed an animal, shed that animal's blood, and took the clothing. Off of that animal, the skins, and made clothing for Adam and Eve. Then we find that Abel, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Job, many people in the Old Testament began to sacrifice unto the Lord God. Then we move into the book of Exodus and the book of Leviticus. And the only way that I can say this the only way that I can I can relate this properly is when you look into the book of Exodus and the book of Leviticus, you see nothing but blood. Amen. I said you see nothing but blood. Amen. I said you see nothing but blood. Amen. We see the sacrifices and, and, and God calling out to men. Why is that? Because sin is against the holiness and righteousness of God. That's found in the first chapter of Romans, the first chapter of Ephesians, the second chapter of Ephesians, and it literally can be found from Genesis to Revelation. Somebody give me an amen. amen. So we see shadows and types of what Jesus did on Calvary for you and I. Number one, I shared this last Sunday, the children of Israel cried out. They were in bondage to Egypt and Charlton Heston showed up. <laughs> Moses, Moses. So would it be written. So would it be done. Moses shows up and on that last eve before they are released God spoke to Moses and said, Pharaoh has declared, and I'm going to perform. My death angel is going to come down and wipe out every firstborn. But hear me, 
Moses go throughout the camp and get a lamb. Bring that little yearling lamb without spot or blemish. Bring it into the house. Four days. Why is that? So that that family could get attached yes. to that little lamb. As that little lamb would dance and prance through the house, and the children would play with the little lamb. Hello, somebody. Oh, what a cute pet. We should keep it. And then day four came. And it was time, and folks, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I know there's, I know there's children of mixed ages in here. I don't have, I, 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 I got no way to say it other than just to be blunt. Okay, they took a knife and took it to the throat, and the blood was spilled out into a basin, and they took some hyssop and began to put it on the doorposts. Hello, somebody. The blood of the lamb was put on the doorposts. And then God spoke, hear me, O saints of the Most High God. They said, now take the lamb, roast it, and eat all of it. Oh, I wish... I wish born-again Christians would take all of Christ and not just the parts that they like. Oh, I know that's, that's, that's just mean, but I, I, I'm serious. It's, oh, I like this passage of Scripture, but I don't like that passage of Scripture. Well, if, if God had elected you to be, to be the one to write it, He would have given you the, the pen. And so then we see later, we see later that this be uh, th this is spoken to be a perpetual sacrifice. Hello, somebody. So as they moved into the wilderness, they began to celebrate every year Passover. But it was different, a little bit different than what it was here. They would bring the lamb out after after going through the same simulation of bringing the lamb into the house for four days. They would then take that lamb to the high priest uh, and they would take that knife to the throat uh, and they would spill that blood into a basin and they would pass it down from one priest to another and then they would pour that uh, on the altar so that that blood would be uh, as a sacrifice unto God and then the family would take the lamb back uh, and roast it and eat it all. Hear me, O saints of the Most High God. It is the Passover lamb. Jesus said the New Testament testifies that He is, uh, He was, uh, and He ever shall be uh, our one and only final Passover lamb. When they put that blood on the doorposts, the angel of death. Get, get this this morning. The angel of death would walk from house to house and oh, I don't like it. Uh, it I, I, God is a righteous and holy God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Amen. But all oh, saints of the God this morning, when that angel would go into that door and look and say, there's blood here. There's blood there. There's blood here. I'm going to pass over.
6. This is the day of atonement, Yom Kippur, the holiest of celebration days. Hear me. The holiest of celebration days for the children of Israel. On this day, was a day of atonement for the sin of all of Israel. And it had to start with the high priest. The high priest would bring a bull. And the high priest, for him and his family, would take his hands, place them on the head of that bowl. And they would pronounce and pray and declare and decree a prayer of transference. That all of my sin is being cast onto this bowl. Cast onto this bowl. Wow. Amen. Then they would take the knife to the throat, and the high priest would take the blood of that bowl and go in to the holy of holies, the most holy place. They would place bells on the high priest's waist, and they would tie a rope around him because if he went in unholy, he was dead when he walked in, and they had to pull him out. He would take and sprinkle the blood on the altar seven times. He would put some of that blood on the horns of the altar. Oh, I remember my dad preaching, and some of us Christians need to put our bull on the altar. That's for another sermon. That's for another sermon. Now listen, hear me. That priest would offer incense, Brother Rick, and then he would back out. And if the children of Israel saw him come out, it was celebration. Yeah. Whew, he made it. Yeah. I said he made it. Amen. Do you know what that means? See, see you're not getting it. Let me, let me help you out. Because, because he went in for his sins and his family's sins and walked out alive, yes. that means he could take care of the rest of the children of Israel. Amen. 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 Oh, wow. Amen. Right. Woo. Yes. Amen. Yes. So then they would bring two goats. And they would cast lots. Whatever lot fell upon the goat, it, one would be the sacrifice unto the Lord, and the other one would, would be the scapegoat. Priest, the high priest would put his hands on the scapegoat and he would pray a prayer of transference to that scapegoat of all the sin of the children of Israel. They would tie red ribbons, hello somebody, Amen. red ribbons around the horn and then they would lead that goat out into the wilderness. Some, some scholars believe that as it progressed they would even take that goat to a cliff and cast it off and kill it so that sin would never come back. Amen. Wow. Then they would take the goat I was offered unto the Lord and they would put their hands on it and place the, uh, 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 excuse me, pr uh, pray the prayer of transference and then they would take the knife to its throat. They would take that blood of that goat, sprinkle it on the altar and on the bowls of the, uh, uh, the the horns of the altar, they would mingle the blood of that scapegoat in that bowl, and then they would put that, and then the priest would walk out and say, "It is done. The sacrifice is completed. Hear me, O children of Israel. Your sins are forgiven for another year." Let me just throw a point in here. Let me slow down a little bit. Let me say this again. The priest 
would put his hand on the bull, on the head of the bull, transfer the sins. He would place his hand on the head of the goat. The head. Transfer the sins. Jesus was crucified at Calvary, at Golgotha, also known as the place of the cross. You didn't hear me? Because Isaiah 53 says, God laid upon Jesus the iniquity and sin of us all. In other words, God put his hand on Jesus' head and transferred your sin to him. Notice this. Now listen, it's important to understand. I know there's some teaching out there. I, 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 I vociferously disagree with it. Jesus did not sin. Sin never entered into a spirit. Sin never entered into a soul. Sin never entered into his body. But supernaturally, the man who knew no sin became sin that we could become victorious over sin. Can I get an amen? amen. Thank you, Jesus. In Leviticus 17, the Bible says life is in the blood. Hebrews 9.22 says that there is no way for remission of sins without the blood. Isaiah 53, i got to read it. I'll read it as quickly as I can. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? I'm in the English Standard Version. For he grew up before him like a young plant, like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or comeliness that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. That's another thing. Jesus was not a good looking guy. I know you don't like that. That's just, that's just heresy. I've seen the movies. No. No, 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 no. Jesus did not want to attract crowds because he looked good. Jesus did not want to attract crowds because he was good looking. Hello, somebody. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. As one of whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried away our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. He was wounded or pierced for our transgressions. He was bruised or crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace and with his wounds uh, we are healed. Let me tell you something. Let me stop there for just a second. On that, wounds are, we by his wounds we are healed. A lot of scholars want to say that's just talking about spiritual. It cannot be because there was a pre-prophetic event that Jesus healed someone and they said this is the fulfillment of that scripture. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord, Jehovah, has laid upon him. The iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter. Like a sheep that before its shivers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and with the rich man in his death, although he had done no violence, and yet there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased Jehovah to crush him. Let me say that again. It pleased Jehovah to crush him. I was sinning greatly this week. Strolling through social media. <laughs> I ran against 
against it, ran, ran up against this comment from a scoffer, from, from somebody who was obviously not a believer. And, and just, just bear with me for a minute. This person said the, the summation of, I, I, I'll paraphrase it, the summation of Christianity is, is this. God got a teenager pregnant so he could kill the offspring. And I read that, dude, get a life. And then the more I thought about it, I said, dude, dude, that's right. You sh that, that is not a negative statement. That shows you the extremes that God went through just to get you the ability to get saved. Amen. That's the love of God. Amen. To go through such extremes. Hello, somebody. So we look at Jesus, the incarnation. Hello, somebody. God sent his angel to the Virgin Mary and said, Mary, you are blessed above and beyond measure. Blessed are you in the fruit of thy womb. The Holy Spirit is going to overwhelm you and going to impregnate you with Jesus the Christ. Why did we have to go there? Hear me, saints of the Most High God. Because we just read all the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. But there was a problem with that blood. It could only handle things for a year. John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin, singular, all-encompassing yes. sin of the world. How are we going to do this with mankind being so sinful? I got an idea. We're going to have the third person of the Holy Trinity, God the Holy Spirit, impregnate Mary and supernaturally make sure that the blood of Jesus is not tainted by any sin, past, present, or future. That way when it is shed, it ain't like no other blood that had ever been shed before. It ain't like no other blood that's going to be shed afterward. It is the blood, the perfect blood, the sinless blood, the righteous blood, the holy blood, the all-encompassing, saving blood of Jesus. shed the blood of stress and anxiety. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yes, yeah. Oh, I, I, I know people, well, Jesus, he, you know, he was never stressed. He, dude, yeah. get it together. Yeah. Yeah. I said, dude, get it together. Read, read your scriptures. Yeah. Jesus was struggling to keep alive just in the garden. Yeah. Yes. He was beaten on the back. For all those sins behind us. Yeah. Amen. I wish somebody would be hearing me this morning. Yeah. Yeah. He was shedding blood from the crown of thorns. And I, I'm gonna tell you, let me talk to you about the crown of thorns, okay? The crown of corn the, the crown, not a corn, but the crown of thorns. <laughs> give me a minute here. Getting ahead of myself. The crown of thorns. How many Holy Ghost this morning? Was not placed on the head of Jesus. It was driven down onto the scalp of Jesus. They placed a stick or a scepter in his hand. They mocked him. And then they took that very stick, false scepter, they thought, hello, and beat that crown of thorns into his head. That crown of thorns, there I go again. The crown of thorns is was shed for the sins of the mind. His hands were pierced. The blood of the hands, whatever I do, is covered. His feet were pierced. 
So wherever my feet take me and I sin, he's got me covered. His heart was pierced. Whatever my heart, my heart is sinful and wicked. Hello, somebody. Deceitful. Who can, who can understand it? It's what the Bible says. But it's covered. Isaiah said that prophetically they plucked the beard out of his face. So my mouth is covered. I, 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 I don't know if I'm getting across here this morning. He was covered. Jesus was covered, saturated, drenched in blood. Hear me, O oh saints of the Most High God, tormented and tortured as sin after sin after sin. But hear me, listen to me. I believe the Holy Spirit spoke to uh, spoke this to me to tell you this morning. His body from the head to the toe, Brother Darrow, was covered in blood. And as God laid the iniquity, it touched that blood with poof. Every time one of the sins that you and I will commit touch the blood of Jesus, poof, it's gone. It's covered. It's done. Poof, poof, poof. For six hours. Six hours! The blood of Jesus was forgiven. Your sin and my sin. And I will tell you this morning that if you look into the New Testament... The cross isn't talked about as much. The death of Christ isn't talked about as much. But if you look into the New Testament, what is talked about more than anything else is the blood of Jesus. Yeah. You can look it up because I already did. And it is proven the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Amen. 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 And isn't it amazing? I'm, I'm about to close. Say thank you, Jesus. <laughs> No more crown of thorns for you. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Jesus prophesied. Wish I could get through to you this morning. Jesus prophesied, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Do you think it's coincidence? That Jesus wasn't placed on the right or on the left, but he was crucified between the two. One hand, whichever side it was, to the repentant thief. Yes. I'm reaching out to you, brother. Today you're going to be with me in paradise and the unrepentant, I'm, I'm still reaching out to you. I'm, I'm still reaching out to you. You mocker, you scoffer, I'm still reaching out to you. I'm reaching out to those that believe and I'm reaching out to those that don't believe. It doesn't matter who what, when, where, how, or why you are, I'm reaching out to you this morning. Amen. Jesus the Christ, Son of God, Son of Man, what did the blood of Jesus do? Brought us a new covenant? Paid the ransom? Gave us remission? Gave us sanctification? Gave us redemption? Gave us propitiation. Gave us peace. Hallelujah. Gave us reconciliation. Yes. Gave us justification. Gave us victory. And according to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 19. Because of Jesus. You can be just like the holy high priest and Hallelujah. enter into the holy of holies. That's some love. I said, that's some love. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you.
Can I share with you one story in closing? Saw this. Skepticated. You ever skepticate on something? I don't know if that's real or not. Genesis 3.15 says Messianic pro prophecy. He's going to bruise, that snake is going to bruise your heel and you're going to crush his head. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yes. For decades, literally decades, they have used horses to produce antivenom. If you get bit by a snake, they've got antivenom serum from horses. The problem has been that 80% of the time, the anti-venom serum would produce an even more worse reaction because of the compatibility. For several years now, and this is this is in scientific history, this is fairly recent, they have found out that anti-venom made from sheep works so much Oh you scientists got to do this back in Genesis. <laughs> Figure it out. Isn't that, isn't that crazy amazing? The serpent ain't got nothing on the blood of the Lamb. I said the serpent Father, we thank you for the blood. We sing that song, thanks for the blood. And we are so thankful. Jesus, when you said it is finished, you had done it all. Spiritually, mentally, physically, financially, maritally, family. The stripes, the torture, the torment, the blood, the beating, you completed our salvation. We are so thankful. So this morning, if you're here, I would ask this morning that you just examine your heart and ask yourself, I'm going to do this in two different ways this morning. If you're here and you'd say, man, I have never received Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And I would like for you to pray for me that this would take place, that I would get right with God because of what Jesus did for me. If that's you, would you raise your hand and just keep it up this morning, very briefly, in Jesus' name. Anybody here? By the Spirit of Almighty God. I have never received Jesus as my Savior, and I would like to do that. Would you pray for me? Anybody here? If you're here and you say, I did. I did it. I remember Sunday school or vacation Bible school or children's church or during a sermon or somebody visiting you, and you did receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you said, I'm going to live for God, but because of situations, circumstances, all the stuff, folks, there's a lot of stuff. Hello, somebody. Amen. A lot of stuff. Amen. But because of all the stuff, I, I, man, I don't, I know I'm not right. I'm not where I should be. And I would appreciate you praying for me this morning. If that's you, would you raise your hand? Anybody here? In the name of Jesus. I see those hands. Thank you, Jesus. I see those hands. Thank you, Jesus. You can put them down. Anybody else? All right, I'm going to ask everyone to stand this morning. Those of you that are watching online, you can join in with us. I'm just going to ask us all to say a prayer. After you get done saying this prayer this morning, you need to figure out what you need to do to get back in touch and right with God. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen.
you need to figure it out. You need to get it done. Brother Rick, Brother Daryl, and I are here to help you in any way, shape, or form that we can. Don't hesitate on this. And the people said amen. amen. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, thank you I thank you for your Son, for your son Jesus, Jesus the Christ. I declare, I, declare, I, decree, I decree, I confess, I confess Jesus, Jesus has, come in the flesh. has come in the flesh. He was God, was God born, in the flesh born in the flesh of the Virgin Mary. Of the Virgin Mary. He lived, he lived a, sinless, a sinless, holy, holy perfect, perfect life. life. I declare, I, declare, I decree, and I confess, I confess that Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Christ died, died on the cross, on the cross for, me. for me. That Jesus, that Jesus the, Christ, the Christ rose, rose three, days later, three days later for me. For me. I, declare, I declare, I decree, I decree and I confess, and I confess that, Jesus that Jesus is my Savior. I accept, I accept his, salvation. his salvation. I accept, I accept his, ransom his ransom that he paid for me. I accept, I accept his, restoration his restoration that he died on the cross, on the cross for, me. for me. I accept, I accept Jesus, Christ Jesus Christ reconciling me, reconciling me to the Father. I pray these things in the name of Jesus. I receive the cleansing blood, the perfect blood of Jesus Christ into my life. If you believe it, receive it. Say amen. Give the Lord a round of applause in Jesus' name. This morning. You are not in any way, shape, or form required to participate. Uh, this is between you and God. But we are going to do communion this morning. I would like to read you scriptures about communion, and then we're going to pray, and then we're going to take communion. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 22, you can find these other passages of scripture. Jesus took the bread and he gave thanks and break it and gave it unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper saying, This cup is the New Testament or new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. Paul speaking to the church of Corinth making sure and he, the, the folks you got to understand this passage of scripture is not encouragement, it is a warning. <clears throat> Come on, somebody. Yeah, this is a warning. Do not take communion lightly. Amen. This is not something we're playing around with. This is not juice and cracker. This is the symbolic spiritual blood of Jesus, the symbolic spiritual body of Christ. Hallelujah. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat this in my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, this do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread, drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he come back. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and let, said so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body for this cause. Many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Yes, Daryl, would you come to the piano 
and just uh, play uh, real lightly this morning, just something, uh, one of the hymns. And I'd like for you just to bow your head, and close your eyes, examine yourself, and make sure that you make the right decision this morning to take communion. And if you're not sure, then don't do it. But examine yourself and repent now to make yourself worthy if you so wish to choose and take and participate in communion. In Jesus' name. said, oh, the blood of Jesus this morning. Let's do this in an orderly fashion. So we have self-contained <coughs> communion kits this morning. There's a basket here. There's a basket over there. They're a little bit hard to wrangle with, but we'll get through it. So if you choose to take communion today, I'm going to invite you up row by row. Just grab one, return to your seat. And just hold on to it, and then we will take communion together. Amen. So the first row on this side, the first row on this side, if you would like to participate in communion, please come forward. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we bless you this morning. Second row over here. Second row over here. If you would come forward this morning.
going to do the fourth row on this side in the back, and the fourth row on this side in the back. And the back section, you can come forward also. Thank you, Jesus, this morning.
Stand with me this morning. Brother Darrell, would you come sing over the blood of Jesus one time through right here? And then Brother Rick's going to dismiss you with the blessing. If you're a first time visitor, uh, visitor here, honored guest, we uh, thank you again so much. If you have a child, I have a special book about Easter I would love for them to have free of charge. God bless you. He is risen. Amen.